here we go. This is exactly what the fourth segment is supposed to be. So we are going to be talking about some of the hot takes that um, I've read on this Instagram account called Court Coverage. I recommend you look at the, the account if you do like basketball. But we're going to take a look at some of his hot takes that he posted uh, a few days ago. And hot take number one is that the Detroit Pistons are not the worst team in the NBA. Now, that definitely is a hot take because the Pistons, as if you guys don't remember, they recently um, broke the um, the record for get, having the longest win streak in NBA history. So, And they are by far the worst team in the NBA right now. I'm going to go ahead and look at exactly what their record is because... As you guys know, I don't necessarily cover the Pistons all that much because there's nothing to really talk about for the Pistons because they're not really going anywhere. They're not there's no general like sense of direction for this team at the moment. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and look at where they stand right now. And yep, they only have 8 wins in this season and 44 losses. Now, they are by far the worst team in um the NBA as of right now but I think what he means is that like I'm um, on paper and like their players like they don't they don't make up the worst team in the NBA I think because or maybe he's saying that he believes that um the Washington Wizards are actually the worst team in the NBA which they're only one win ahead of uh, the Pistons right now and with that argument in mind I think it it's sort of it's a little bit fair to um to say that um the Pistons aren't really the worst team in the NBA, but they're definitely top two worst teams in the NBA right now between them and the Washington Wizards. Now the reason why I say this is because the Wizards they had they they just brought in Jordan Poole and Jordan Poole recently has been n t terrible, not what anyone on Washington was expecting when um, they brought in Jordan Poole, considering the production he was giving to Golden State. And um, people were calling him the third Splash Brother. That's how much hype he was getting around the league and while being on Golden State. So with that in mind, for him to now end, like um, for with him now in the season to lead the, um, lead the NBA in um, box plus minus negatively, like right now he leads the NBA in negative box scores. That is horrible. That means that every single time he's on the court, the other team outscores the Wizards. And Kyle Kuzma is right up there too. He is second. And this is really bad. It shows like how terrible like their defense is and just like how cocky Jordan Poole is. His play style and how he plays. It's like he thinks he's the best player on the court every single time. And like I admire the confidence, but it's like he is not playing like he's the best player on the court. He plays ridiculously flashy, like every game is a street ball game for him, and he has a huge ego. And it's with that in mind, they definitely are in the running for being the worst team in the NBA, the Washington Wizards. So from a glance, it looks like a hot take, but when you really think about it, not entirely a hot take. So... Next hot take is the Sixers will be at best a first round team. Yes, this is 100% true. I 100% agree with this. And there's a possibility that they might not even make the playoffs at this rate with how many games that they've been losing. They might just make the play in and they might be one and done in the play in. So not that much of a hot take, not much to really talk about with this one, because as we all know, the Sixers are not as good of a team with without Embiid in this lineup I was completely wrong I thought they were going to um they were going to be better with Joel Embiid out of the lineup or they were going to play like they were better like the rest of the players were going to play better but that's com the, the complete opposite with this team and the third hot take that he has is that the Warriors should blow it up ASAP minus Steph Curry and Kaminga I don't agree with this whatsoever. I think Draymond Green should be included in that package of not blowing it up. They absolutely need Draymond on the team, especially since Draymond recently, like um, a few years ago, he signed um, an extension with Golden State, which was which played into the reason why Jordan Poole decided to leave 
because the money was going to Draymond when he felt like the money should have been going to him. But I feel like Draymond Green should be kept on the Golden State's rotation because of all the value that he brings, not on the offensive end, but on the defensive end, and just giving Curry the screens that he needs and being able to make looks for um, the other players, as well as um, improving the other players' decision-making. Kaminga, his decision-making has improved tremendously, and I think part of that is by is because of having Draymond Green on the lineup uh, to help him uh, make the better decisions and to teach him what decisions to make and where to stand and like uh, where to go, who to pass to, when to score, those kinds of decisions. And the other hot take that he has is neither Oklahoma City or Minnesota will make the conference finals. I agree with this 100%. I think that both of these teams are a little bit too inexperienced and a little too immature to be considered a favorite to making it to the Western Conference Finals, especially with teams such as Denver and um, arguably Phoenix, arguably um, Dallas. Dallas has made a run, a deep run. They're capable of making a deep run in the playoffs, as well as the Clippers. Again, like I'm not too hot on the Clippers, but I do agree with this. I don't think that the OKC or Minnesota would be able to make it to the Conference Finals, given if they match up against any of those uh, teams that I've mentioned. Now, the other hot take that he has is Paolo Banchero should not be an All Star. I 100% agree with this. Now, you guys, you guys know I am a huge fan of Scotty Barnes. I personally would have rather had Scotty Barnes take Paolo Banchero's position instead uh, as an All Star substitution, but. Scotty Barnes, he is an all-star now only because of, it was basically out of pity because of the recent injuries to Joel Embiid and to Julius Randle. So, but even without that, I still think he should have been an all-star over Paolo Banchero. That's just me. And the other hot take is the Cavs won't make the conference finals. Now, I mentioned previously that the Cavs have been on a hot streak and they are one of the teams to beat in the Eastern Conference. But I do think that if the Knicks match up against them in the second round, the Knicks are going to end up being on top. The Knicks beat uh, this Cavs team last year in the playoffs in the first round, and the Knicks have only gotten better since then. So with that in mind, I think the Knicks have a huge advantage going into the, a series against Cleveland, and they're going to end up winning that series against Cleveland. And also... um. I mentioned this on a previous podcast, but the Knicks, they are used to uh, a lot of pressure. Being a Knicks player, it's a lot of pressure, and there's a lot of media attention that comes with being a Knicks player. The Cavs don't necessarily get that media attention, so with that in mind, I feel like that is going to be the difference maker between the Cavs and the Knicks if they do match up, their ability to handle pressure. And... Another hot take we have is that Dame should not have been an all-star starter. I 100% agree with this. I think it should have been Trey Young that should have taken the all-star, um, the starting spot. Maybe even Jalen Brunson should have taken the all-star spot over Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard did not deserve to be an all-star this year. It was a popularity contest given the fact that Trey Young is averaging better numbers than Damian Lillard and given the fact that Jalen Brunson is also having a better season than Damian Lillard. And we have one more hot take. The Clippers will win the NBA Finals. No. 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 This is by far the worst hot take he has on this list. No. The Clippers, as I mentioned earlier, and I say countless and countless of times, have to see it in the postseason. They have some of a lot of these players on this roster, minus Kawhi. They are notorious for losing series where they should have won. They are absolutely notorious for doing it. Paul George, um, in 2020, completely underperformed in the bubble against the Denver Nuggets and was arguably the main reason why that team couldn't make that final step to make it to the Western Conference Finals and have the Battle of L.A. that we thought was going to happen in the bubble. I'm not going to sit here and completely bosh Paul George, however, because he did lead the Clippers to the Western Conference Finals the year afterwards, 
uh, going up against Phoenix for the first time in franchise history without Kawhi Leonard. But recently, with how Paul George has been playing in a lot of these games, he's been playing really, really bad. And I have to see it in the playoffs. I have to see that good performance that he had once again in the playoffs. He's had a few more recently he's had a few more bad performances in the playoffs than he's had good performances in the playoffs and another player in the starting lineup that is also notorious for blowing a bunch of playoff leads and a bunch of series is where he should win is James Harden James Harden is notoriously known as one of the worst postseason players in NBA history both the eye test and the stats show this so I don't want to. It does. I don't want to make it sound like that. I'm completely hating on James Harden. He's a great basketball player, top four, top five shooting guard of all time. But his postseason career leaves a lot to be desired, and it's every single season that he just loses in these postseason games where he should win, and it's his individual performances that um, are the reason why this uh, most of his teams can't get over the hump. So. With that in mind, having him in the starting lineup going into the playoffs, it's very, very, like, it's very scary because he's known for underperforming in a lot of very important games. Same thing with Russell Westbrook recently. Russell Westbrook, he gets a lot of hype from his fans. I am personally not a big fan of Westbrook. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a great athlete. He's a great teammate. But his play style is not one of my favorites. He he doesn't seem to learn from his past mistakes, especially in late games where he just can't help but take a terrible shot or a terrible three-pointer. And every single time in these recent postseasons, he's underperformed. When he went up against the Utah Jazz with rookie with with a against a rookie Donovan Mitchell, he greatly underperformed in that game. And in the final game in game 5, he scored 43 points he scored 45 points yeah but he took like 43 shots you can't take that many shots and only get 45 points I'm sorry that's not winning basketball he also underperformed in the bubble when he was on Houston he underperformed um on the Lakers they didn't make the playoffs because of him he also underperformed um on the Washington Wizards in uh, the postseason against uh, Philly when Philly was the one seed. Now, I understand that Philly was the one seed, but Russell Westbrook wasn't doing anything to try to get his team to win. He was still making those past mistakes. Kawhi Leonard is the only player that has had dominant postseason runs and has had... He has this aura around the the postseason where it's like he can't miss. And it's like you know he's going to end up winning the game in the end with the amount of shots that he can make in the postseason. So I don't think that they are going to be the favorites. I have to see this I have to see this amazing basketball that they're playing in the postseason before I jump to speculations. But with that, we are out of time uh, for this podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, wait a minute. Um, there's somebody in the comments. Um, uh, before I before I end the stream, I want to acknowledge in the comments. Good stuff, bro. Keep up the grind. Thank you, Muvzy um, Hoops. If I said your name, forgive me if I completely botched that. But I really appreciate it. It is a lot of work, especially trying to come up with the segment with uh, the Super Bowl um, happening this weekend. There was a lot of news coming around the Super Bowl and barely any news about basketball, so it was really tough. But I really appreciate it that it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, but with that, we are out of time uh, for this segment. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, uh, leave a positive review, and as always, please remember to tip and to donate to get your comments recognized. It really makes a difference. The link is displayed below the ticker on every show segment and is in the link in the description. That is streamelements.com slash gsmcsportsnetwork dot slash tip. Again, it helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself, the host, you guys, the viewers. Once again, the link is streamelements.com slash gsmcsportsnetwork dot slash tip. And with that, we are out of time. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok for more content and updates. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson, and have a wonderful day. And as always, take care.